Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel for this week's safety recap. Before we get started make sure that you give me a thumbs up down below here to encourage me to make more videos of this type. Also subscribe to my YouTube channel where you will find additional videos of this nature, toolbox safety topic videos, and leadership training videos. And if you find this information useful or helpful, make sure you share it with your colleagues and co-workers. Well, let's go ahead and get started with the recap. First, I would like to thank those who welcomed me onto their job sites this past week. There is ample positive feedback from client companies concerning the safe, timely, and efficient work our teams are providing. Your reputation is and will continue to precede you. Keep up the good work and continue striving to be the ones that others wish to emulate and want on their team. Now there were a few items of safety concerns noted and I will cover them after a few words about three-way communication. Now I read this in Safety Talk Ideas and it's a, it's a bunch of safety talks that they have in the Raken app for construction. Three-way communication. Communication is critical to working safely and efficiently. While the process of verbal communication seems straightforward, there are many issues to consider. This safety talk focuses on these issues revolving around verbal communication and using best practice called three-way communication to improve communication between employees during work tasks. Some common problems to consider with verbal communication. There are many issues that affect whether or not our desired message is getting across to the receiver. Some common issues to consider are culture barriers. Many people speak English as a second language and may not understand what is being said. Even in different geographical regions of the same country, cultural barriers can exist. And then assumptions. Making assumptions about what someone is trying to say or will say can be a dangerous mistake at work. Making assumptions about what message someone is trying to convey can be affected by mood, distractions, time pressures, etc. And then there's mixed or confusing messages. Poor word choices or long-winded messages can lead to confusion. Verbal communication through face-to-face -face conversations can experience any or all of the issues mentioned above. Any issue or problem with the message being sent is increased when using radio or phone to verbally communicate with coworkers. Along with the above mentioned issues, there are other issues when communicating with these devices such as interference, poor reception, background noise, lack of nonverbal clues, etc. A tool to help address the above issues to ensure that the correct message is being sent and understood is three-way communication, also called the repeat back process. Three-way communication as a best practice. Three-way communication can be very effective in validating the message being sent between the sender and receiver, thus reducing the chance of mistake occurring during a work task. Now, how three-way communication works. The basic outline of three-way communication is as follows. The sender states his message to the receiver. The receiver acknowledges the communication by repeating the critical information in the communication back to the sender. If the receiver did not understand the communication, then he has to ask the sender for clarification. The last step is the sender confirms the message is correctly understood by the receiver, or if it is not understood, the sender has to indicate that the message is not understood and the three-way communication process has to start over. Here's a basic scenario in a workplace. 
two mechanics are aligning an, a, a belt on a conveyor and they are communicating via radio since they are not close to each other. The process involves powering the conveyor to align the belt. Sender, I am away from the belt. You are clear to energize the belt to track it into place. Receiver, are you away from the belt? I can energize the belt now. Sender, that is correct. Clear to energize. In summary, there are many issues in every form of communication. While verbal communication seems like a straightforward way to convey a message compared to an email or a text, there are still many issues that can be present while using it. Three-way communication can be critical in verifying a message is understood during a work task, which can make all the difference in whether a worker is injured or not. On with the recap. Let's talk about compressed gas cylinder storage. Compressed gas cylinders are to be stored in an upright position with valve caps on and secured against tipping and being struck by. Fuel cylinders are to be stored a minimum of 20 feet from oxidizers. Gauges are to be removed from cylinders end cart if it is unused for a single shift. Next, let's talk about fall protection. Personal fall protection equipment inspection and use. Ensure that team members are properly trained in the inspection and use of PFP equipment, including choosing and using anchor points. Let's talk about travel alarms. Ensure required travel alarms are operating on all mobile equipment, skid steers, track hose, boom and scissor lifts, and any other mobile equipment. Let's talk about task lighting or temporary lighting. Ensure there is ample lighting on the work site. General construction areas require a minimum of five foot candles of illumination. Improper illumination leads to the leading cause of injuries in the construction business, and that's falls and falls from the working level, same level. All right, boys and girls, that's it for this week's safety recap thanks for stopping by and thanks for watching make sure that you give me a thumbs up down below here to encourage me to make more videos of this type also subscribe to my youtube channel where you will find additional videos of this nature toolbox and safety topic videos and leadership training videos and if you found this information useful or helpful make sure that you share it with your colleagues and co-workers. And until we see each other again, take care of yourself because you're number one. Look out for your co-workers and help ensure their safety. Have a grateful day. And remember, I will see you in the field. All right, it's, uh, listen, three-way communication is just one technique, but it's, a, it's, it's a used quite a bit. It's used in the military. It's used in, in rigging and flagging for cranes. It's used in a whole, it, it's very effective, and it's used in a whole lot of areas. Try three-way communication, whether it's face-to-face, -face, on the telephone, or on a radio. Uh, try and use it. Make good use of that. It's very good. Uh, remember that... Uh, these videos can be used for training on your job site. Uh, just have a sign-in sheet and note the, the video, where you find the video at. You can use this video. I've got several other videos out there. You can use somebody else's video. The important thing is you're getting the training to your guys. Have them watch the chosen video. Uh, have them sign the sign-in sheet that states what video they watched. Have a discussion about it date the document and that becomes a document that can be handed over to OSHA to indicate or to prove or to show that you do continuing training on hazard recognition and mitigation on your job site with your team uh, with your company and uh, it, it satisfies a lot of things uh, anyway if you watch to the very end 
I got out again this few past weekend and made some more of those Easter eggs. Uh, you can take a look at them. Maybe you like them. Maybe you won't. But anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Have a grateful day. And we'll see you in the field. Stop recording.